joining me this week for the very first installment of Pixie Talks Review Vlogs. Pixie Talks, Pixie Talks, reviews and vlogs at Pixie Talks. So, I have a lot of Whovians in my life. My sister is like the biggest Whovian you will ever meet, and I have lots of other friends who are also massive fans of the show. And it isn't as though I have ever been opposed to the idea of checking out Doctor Who. Judging by my current taste in media, it seems like something that would be right up my alley. I've just never really gotten around to watching it before. But I figured, what with a new Doctor on the way, that it was time to start delving into the extensively weird world of Doctor Who. Now, of course, the first order of business was picking a Doctor to start with. It's generally accepted for new viewers nowadays to start with the ninth or 10th Doctor, you know, starting with the new stuff when they brought it back in the 2000s. But I am just much too much of a completionist for that. So ladies and gentlemen, I started not with Christopher Eccleston or David Tennant. I started with William Harnell. going to begin my journey into the wonderful world of the Doctor, I'm going to begin said journey fresh, experiencing each Doctor in their proper order, learning items about the show as they are presented in the order that a native watcher would have way back when. So do keep in mind that my observations are all coming from one who is experiencing this franchise one step at a time. And it begins, of course, with William Harnell. The Doctor is an absolute grump. Curmudgeonly is a fantastic adjective to describe him. But he's so lovably so that you can't help but be drawn in by his cranky charm and want to follow his adventures. William Harnell was an amazing actor who portrayed this character in such a way as to make a believable gruff on the outside but cuddly like a teddy bear when you really get to know him sort of man throughout the series are a little bit more hit and miss. Some of them are believable actors and some are not. Most notable for this is his very first companion ever, his granddaughter Susan. Watching her try to believably portray a character was a bit awkward at the best of times. Just check out how she performs when trying to portray somebody who has injured their ankle. How's your ankle, Susan? But she's not just poorly acted, she's also poorly written, as her character never really does much or contributes anything to the stories. She mostly screams a lot and gets in accidents. But what do you expect? She's a girl. My favorite companions from this series, interestingly enough, are some of the first ones, however. Ian and Barbara have really great chemistry with the Doctor, and they play off of him brilliantly. When he's grumpy, they are sweet and understanding. When he throws caution to the wind, which he does a lot, they are more level-headed. They functioned as the perfect foils for his temperamental nature, and over the course of their time with him, softened him up quite a bit, which was a brilliant show of character development. To me, though, what's most fascinating about Doctor Who, at least this first incarnation of the show, is its massive difference in tonal qualities from other sci-fi properties. To give an example, Star Trek is incredibly optimistic about its portrayal of technology in the future. The tone tends to be, man, technology's awesome, the universe is awesome, people are awesome. Doctor Who, on the other hand, is decidedly more dark. Its atmosphere is foreboding and often quite a bit eerie. It can at times feel almost Lovecraftian in its storytelling and situations. It's less optimistic, and its tone seems to be the universe is decidedly hostile and terrifying. Throughout all of the scary situations the Doctor encounters, however, he seems to be the sort of character who you just know will always triumph, and he's a joy to watch and follow. I came to really love his curmudgeonly nature and his hidden heart of gold. Now's brilliant acting makes me want to seek out other titles to star in him because I was just so blown away by him. Now, no, the special effects are not great. In fact, they are decidedly bad. 
The Daleks are not scary at all. Their lumbering movements are so laughable. It can be hard to believe in the character's fear in the face of what seems like such easily overpowerable enemies. And don't even get me started on the ridiculous costuming for the original Cybermen. Honestly, that's to be expected from a series from the early 60s. People have the same complaints with the original Star Trek, which I also adore and love. William Harnell's Doctor was a very fun ride, and I thoroughly enjoyed what I watched of him. I will be sad to move on from him, actually, but such is the nature of the Doctor. Onwards to Patrick Troughton! watching my review of the very first Doctor, I had a lot of fun with my very first steps into the Hooniverse. Moving on from that, next week is time for my very first video game review, so be sure to subscribe and check back for that. Also don't forget to enter the giveaway contest. Add me on Facebook or Twitter and comment or tweet at me, I'm YouTube username and I want to be frozen. See you guys next week! <laughs>